Hello, how are you? This is our brand new pack. So we've um, got, this is for the younger ones, for the toddlers. It's all through sensory play, uh, the colors, shapes, and then we've got ABCs and one, two, threes, and then prepositions and opposites in the third book. So the pack comes with the three books. It also comes with these flashcards. Now these won't be cut out because I'll never get packs out otherwise. Um, so they come with the pages. They're laminated already. So they're white, clean, ready to go. I'll run through them in a sec. It also comes with the mat. I added this to the pack yesterday. Just because we're doing the sensory play, um, I really wanted to have a mat that we can do the Play-Doh and the spaghetti play and the shaving cream and the finger painting and everything else. So this is a white clean mat. Obviously, if you get the digital, you'll just print this out at home and laminate it yourself. But if you get the books, this will come with it. So you've got the personalized name, which matches the name on the books. Um, if you want that blank, just type in blank on the thing. I've got instructions there. And then you've got the back as well. I wanted a white sheet um, so that I could use it for photos. So you can actually see the contrast against this one. So you've got the back and the front there. All right, let me move to this pack. I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time on the actual books. Um, because it's not a handwriting sort of one. So we don't want our little ones writing in here. Sorry, my voice was going a bit funny then. We don't want to just resort to writing. So we don't want to straight away get the book, give the kids a marker and let them go. For one, under four years old, their hands are not developed properly to hold pens. Um, so we do want to use the chunky markers, crayons, um, but for these packs, we want to go even bigger and like really push the sensory learning through play. Um, just some little bits and pieces to show you. The second video will be all the sensory play. It comes with the recipes in here and play ideas as well. Using your stamping, I think that's a word. Um, stamping, we've got magnetic letters. Sorry, you're just going to have to put up with my voice. I don't know what it's doing. Um, finger painting, tracing, rice trays. But I'll go into that soon, yeah? But I just want you to um, you know, know from the beginning that these are designed for sensory play. Now, I have here, um, I've also, these are the different ideas as far as sensory play goes, but also, um, you know, for our little ones, particularly if you're getting this for your two-year-olds, instead of putting them at a table where it's flat on the surface, and if you're writing or tracing, you're using those fine motor skills, you're using um, actions from the wrist and fingers, whereas if we stick this up vertical, I can't really show you a huge amount under the camera here. But if you put it onto an easel or onto the window, the movement when you move is actually coming from your shoulder and we're developing those gross motor skills first, which is what we want to do with our little ones. So we want to, yeah, let me go through a little bit more then I'll explain that. Um, so you've got your Play-Doh and your Oobleck recipes. Uh, cloud dough. I'm going to try snow. I might try cloud dough in the second one. We'll see how we go. Don't have any yogurt, but this is a great one. Um, just, you know, your two-year-olds, everything's going in their mouth still. So to make your paint and your play stuff taste safe, um, you can add your food coloring to the yogurt. That's a really fun way to play. Uh, make sure that dries properly or just bin it because otherwise you're going to end up with a science experiment. Yes, because obviously it's got no preservatives in there and it's going to smell super funky. Um, yep, I'll leave that. Okay, I'm going to quickly flick through these. So we've got our colours. Um, I've spent a lot of time and money as well on the pictures. The pictures are so pretty. Um, so these are more reference ones to start. And then we come to, so you've got your 12 colours, including rainbow. Then you come to these ones. Let me move some of this stuff out of the way. And we have our colours here. So we've got yellow, red, orange, blue, green, purple, pink, white, brown, black, rainbow, and gray. So for this one, you're not gonna have all the colors, but we're going to simply just match them up, yeah? You can also use these flashcards and go around the house. So say you choose the color red today and get a basket and fill it up with all the red things in the house. So you see, it's not just to use the book, but to use it um, you know, with your everyday play. Red, where's my red? There, pink, yellow orange. You get the point, yeah? So we've done it in this format with the paint tray. I've also matched it up so these fit the sizes and all the colours. And then the paint, got red, orange, yellow. So they're also learning the order of the rainbow as well. Mind you, I haven't put indigo in. And then, okay, that kind of goes out the window when you get to these, whoops, black, brown. And then over the page, we'll have no, nope, not for that one. We don't. That's what we do. All right, colors again. And then we move on to the, this is just coloring in. So I haven't put sensory play in this one. 
um, but I would encourage you to hang on a sec if you are going to color with markers or crayons or whatever make sure they're big and chunky yeah I've got the paint sticks which I will add back to these packs we've just sold out of them right now while I'm doing this video I haven't actually used the paint sticks for anything other than dots at the moment. These are really good in that they don't stick too much to the next page. If you're worried about that, um, just put a page in between. If you want to make them reusable, you can obviously laminate them as well. Now that's, okay, it's a little bit sticky, but I'm not too worried about that sticking. All right, so we've got our red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, pink, brown, white, black, gray, and rainbow. Then we move to our shapes. So I'm going to put my colors away, although you can use the colors and shapes together just because of the way we've colored them. All right, so we've got circle. So we're talking about here, how many corners can you see? How many edges can you see? And that's repeated on each page because these books are deliberately, I'm getting, I obviously had red paint on my fingers and the red dye I was coloring faster before. Anyway, never mind, sorry. Um, yeah, we go for that repetitive um, in each activity. Sorry, with the corners and the edges. Parallelogram, rhombus. Like, why do you kids need to know this? But in kindy, kindy, pre-primary, they're teaching them these names. They used to be a diamond when I was at school, but it's a rhombus now. Parallelogram is when you have your two parallel sides. So still a quadrilateral. I didn't bring in quadrilateral to this pack. Pentagon, hexagon, star, cross. And then we've got our shapes here. So we can match them up again with our flashcards. Triangle, as we're doing it, say the name of the shape. You can also say the color as well. So we've got a pink heart, green hexagon, purple triangle, yellow star, blue parallelogram, the uh, orangey red oval, a, ooh, hold up. There, hexagon, pentagon. So we've got a dark green pentagon. We've got a dark blue square, a greeny rhombus, an orange cross, red circle, blue rectangle. And then we've got a different matching activity. And we're matching up the words. Wouldn't worry about this one too much with your younger ones, but if they're at the four-year-old age group, you can start doing it with the words. Not that they will be reading these words, but they'll, they'll become sight words as they begin to recognize. And you can just say them as you do it. Now, this one, this is where we bring in our sensory play, yeah? So we've got lots of sensory play ideas um, to use for all the activities here. So you've got your sidewalk, chalk, letter biscuits. I forgot why I put that in. Um, so cooking with your little one to make letters and shapes with the actual dough. Um, grains play tray, bath crayons, sand or rice tray, gel bag, Play-Doh, finger painting, window painting. Um, we'll cover some of them in the next video. But we've also done additional ones here. So spaghetti art. This is what I was doing before, which is why my hands are red. Um, so I have put the pot of spaghetti on. So boiling spaghetti with the red food coloring. And we're going to use it in the next one um, to trace around the shape and then color it in. So the actual starch in the spaghetti when it's um, cooked will stick to the page and we'll let it dry. Again, let it dry properly or you end up with a funky science experiment. This one is colored pasta. So we'll put it in the Ziploc bag with vinegar and food coloring, shake it up. Um, so this is dry pasta, not cooked. And then we'll use that to decorate our shape. Salt painting for the heart, leaf rubbing for the triangle. Again, you can use these and do it wherever you want. It doesn't have to be for this page, yeah? Um, I've put the colors in there as well, but do what you want. And with what you've got around the house too. Uh, stickers for the rectangle, sponge painting for the parallelogram. Uh, stick paint stick painting so these for the rhombus finger painting for the pentagon and colored rice for the hexagon crayon sharpenings I've not done that since school um, I don't know why I thought of that but yep put that one in there puffy paint for the cross and that is the first book so we've done our colors and shapes now our numbers, um, I have got this here. So whether you want to write on the page or have your rice tray next to you and trace into the tray, yeah? So we've got our numbers. I'm just gonna flip through a bit faster. Um, our number, we've got these ones. So they're directional. You can see 
where to start and the line. This isn't so much um, you can write on these because they are white clean, but it's more to take this with you when you've got the sand tray or you're playing outside in the sand pit and to practice the numbers. Yeah, so we're matching them up. Whoops, three, four, counting as we go. We can trace it with our finger as we go. So we've got the pictures on this one. We've got the colored numbers on this one and the words on this one. If you're doing it with a two-year-old, feel free to skip the words one. I've just added that in there for something extra. Um, I'm sure, here we go, I had these numbers as well. So these ones, you've got the numeral, the word, and then the matching picture. Let me put my peg back together. And then we've got our ABCs. Now I have done them all phonetically correct. Um, so app for alpaca, apple, axolotl, I think he's called, ant and anchor. Um, so there's what, five or more pictures on each one. Again, flicking through, but they're all bright and pretty and colorful. Um, and now this one, not a sloth. He is a sloth, but he's a two-toed sloth and he's called an a now. Oh, were there any other tricky ones? Can't remember. If you ever get stuck on what any of the pictures are called, just send us a PM. Okay, and then we're matching up the letters. So we move to our letters flashcards. Don't need to show you them. It's going to be the same as the numbers. Obviously, they're letters. So you've got your uppercase, lowercase, your alpaca, and the word at the bottom. So matching them up to the pictures. Then we're matching them up to the letters. Then, oh, hang on. This one, lowercase letters. So we learn lowercase letters first. I have put uppercase letters in there as well if you want to use that as an extension. And, okay, so we've done our colors, shapes, letters, counting, this one, our prepositions and opposites. I haven't done opposites at all in our packs before. So this one, again, is more of a reference one, but to also then take this and use these words and notice when you use these words in your everyday lives. These will help your little one understand instructions. If you say, walk over to the wall, and turn the light switch well, on or off, and they don't know what on or off means, how are they going to follow the instruction if they don't understand the instruction? Or if you say behind or on top of, um, so get the controller behind the tissue box. If they don't know what behind means, how are they going to know where to look? And you're just setting them up for failure. So we teach them these, yes? So we've got in and out, and then I've put a sentence there um, of how you would use it in a sentence or what we do with it. So we take the colors out, to play and we put them back in when we're finished. Up and down, so I've used the ladder and the slides, hot and cold. You can then um, do this with your little one and then go run to the bathroom and test the hot water and the cold water and show that they're opposites and they're different, yes? And how to turn them on and off safe, on and off safely. Oh, there you go, on and off, happy and sad. Go and have a look in the mirror and pull happy and sad faces and show what it looks like and how you might feel if you had that face. Wet and dry, big and small, tall and short, slow and fast, light and heavy, smooth and rough, long and short, hard and soft, sweet and sour, quiet and noisy. It's a big fun one as far as indoor and outdoor activities go or inside voice and outside voice. Messy and clean, open and closed, Empty and full, front and back, uh, for getting dressed as well and learning that your shirts often have the print on the front. Um, night and day, sit, stand, forwards, backwards, and then we move to prepositions. So our opposites were opposites. Prepositions are directional instructions, yes? So they do both come in um, hand in hand with following instructions, but... There's a bit of a difference there. Um, so top and bottom, so yes, that is an opposite as well, but it's understanding where something is. So oh, this one as well, I've tried to, hang on. What shape is the block at the top of the tower? So for the, the last prepositions book, I had the flaps and the bits and pieces, um, but it was a lot of work to put it together. So I've tried to still get the interaction without having the lift up bits and pieces to put the book together. Does that make sense? That was what I was trying to say. So what shape is the block at the top of the tower? So we locate the top and then what is the shape? So it's a triangle, yeah, or a 
triangular prism, but I was just going for triangle there. Um, what block is at the bottom of the tower? Or what colour block is at the bottom of the tower? So the colour block is red. Which kid is up on the seesaw and which kid is down? How many kids are in the sandpit? How many kids are out of the sandpit? So we're bringing in the how many, so the um, colours, shapes, and then the numbers that we've been working on in the previous two books. Okay, what is inside the box? What is outside the box? Which kid is on top of the bowls? Which kid is under the bowls? Can you see above the water? Or what can you see above the water? What can you see below the water? What three animals are on the left side of the page? What three animals are on the right? You can also extend this one. Which animals are in the middle? Uh, which animals are at the top? Which animals are at the bottom left or top right? Because you've got the nine to work with there. Before and after. What happens before a rainbow? What do you see in the sky after it rains? What happens to the ground when a roller track rolls forwards and backwards? Who is in the middle? Uh, the T-Rex is next to the Ankylosaurus. So these ones don't have um, a, a partner word, I suppose. So you've got next to, in between, around. Uh, middle is another one as well. Did I cover that? I think I did in the instructions here. And then this one, we've tried to use a few different instructions and the flashcards. So put the colour. So I'm going to choose my colour. So I would get my little ones, uh, put the red card in between the lion and the giraffe. So I've got my lion and my giraffe. I'm going to put the red colour in between. I'm going to choose the letter, what? Huh. Put the letter card, I'll put the letter H huh above the lion. So that's going to go there. And my number is going to be number one. Put the number one card behind the zebra. There you go. And you can change that up a ton of different ways with all the cards that you've got. Again, for this one, left, right, top, and bottom. So you're putting it in the different places. You choose the color, the shape, the letter, and the number. And what color is on the top row in the middle? So we're looking at the picture. We're locating the top row and which one's in the middle of the top row. And I'll leave the rest for you there. So that is the end of this book. This pack includes your prepositions and opposites, letters and counting, the colors and shapes, you get the play mat with it as well, which all of these are personalized. And then all of the, I've made a bit of a mess over here, the flashcards. Oh, hang on. I forgot this one as well. So I've got, um, I didn't do all of the prepositions. There's your middle one there. But I did a few of them. Um, you can take these when doing your sensory play activities. You can take them outside. You could hide your kid's favorite teddy and then do a treasure hunt um, and use the cards to describe where to look. Yeah. So up and down. So if the teddy's up on the bookshelf, you're using those words and show your little one. Yeah. Using these as a reference and to help you remember, um, you know, to teach your little one these words in everyday language. All right, I'm going to stop talking now. I'm going to move to the sensory play. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.